Hi everybody. Hi everybody. Um, I'm Scott. I'm John. And my iPad just went off. Nice. <laughs> and we're married. Um, hope everybody's doing well. I'm going to turn the sound off on this. I've got a script um, and reference materials. We're super high tech this week. Um, and they're all on my iPad. So. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so we're in a different location in our backyard. Yeah, we had uh, some folks over for a socially distanced gathering. Book and, club. Book club. And we set up a, this was where we set up the buffet, so to speak. So As, uh, as um, Chevy Roll would say, grab y'all drink. Mm -hmm. So I've got my, white, my watermelon white claw, which says more about me than it says about the drink, but... It says all kinds of things, mm -hmm. all of them basic. It's true. Um, so we are here to talk about knitting and knitting related stuff. Mm -hmm. We've got um, winners for our knit along. We've got a, finished objects. Mm -hmm. We've got new cast ons. We've got a acquisitions, acquisitions, or stash enhancement, or whatever you want to call it. What is it that Ray and Kevin call it? Is it breaking the bank? Breaking or, the or bank. Is that fiber. Someone calls it. I can't. Remember. Fiber hustle. No, Maybe. I don't think they call it that. I don't okay. remember. Anyway, we have that. Yes. And then um, we have an Angela Lansbury movie. We we remembered her this time. Yes, we did. We not did. Leave her in the basement by herself, um, like last week. And there is a B update. B A update too. I don't want to talk about Betty Ann. She oh. makes me uncomfortable. Oh, I know. I know. But this is important. Okay. So it's important. <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So should we start off by talking about? Just let's jump into some of our projects, and then we'll get to the should we compare later. sweaters? We should compare sweaters because right. they're both finished objects this yes, time, right? Two finished objects. They are both. Ta -da! So I have to tell you about my new fancy project bag. <laughs> this is a very fancy bag that I got in the mail when I bought some garment bags. <laughs> Some cheap garment bags to put. I have a bunch of sport coats that I wear to work, and I wanted some, and several of them are more for the winter. And so I bought a bunch of garment bags to put them in, and they came with free shoe bags. Right. <laughs> so now it's a project now bag. Now it's a project bag. Um, if you hear jingling in the background, that's her dog. Yeah. He's going crazy. He's going crazy behind us for something. some reason. So anyway, um, we have two finished objects. Um, they're both baby sweaters. So yes, um, for different babies. Different babies. So this is mine. This is mine. So cute. Is there a front and a back? No. On the, the flax, flax light. The flax is the flax is either reversible. Way. There's okay. no. There's optional neck shaping. But, yeah. Um, cool. So yeah. This is mine. So you did the flax light. I did the flax light. Um, I did. Which I forget who that's by. It's in Kennets. Oh, that's right. And I did the Lila Now. Lila Now. Lila Now from Fresh French Press Knits. Um, so yeah, this was super fun. Um, it's a bottom-up knit sweater. And mine's top down. I know. Um, and so I'd never done the thing where you so the way for bottom ups with raglans and stuff like that, you knit the body up to here where the arm, armpits are then you knit the sleeves and then you join everything together um and well you join the sleeves to the body and then you sort of knit around and knit yeah. around and around you do the, do the yoke basically mm -hmm. um and yeah that was actually so um, did you do the rag so instead of doing raglan increases you did raglan decreases yes okay yes um Which what is, were they in this pattern knit two together and slip slit knits okay um so pretty easy um but yeah, I, um, it wasn't as, you know, it was a little scary joining everything together because you, ah, but the pattern's really clear. And then after you, the first couple of rounds were a little, because basically you're knitting a circle with two little bumps on the end. Mm. So the um, cables didn't love that. The, the, for your needles? Yeah. Okay. So it was a little... For the first couple of rows, it was a little kind of tough getting everything around because it's not really a round shape. Oh. Um, so were you magic knotting? I mean, magic looping? No, no, just knitting the round. Okay. So, 
Um, no, I know, but I mean, like, you're, it was all on a, like, a 16-inch needle or something. About 40-inch needle? I don't know. You weren't using magic loop magic. No, no. It was, okay. it was just needing, needing to make it in the round. Got so, um, So, yeah, but once the first couple of rows got done, um, it was just fine. And then there was neck shaping, which is the first time I've done that for a sweater. Um, and then the other cool thing about it is that for the... Collar? Collar. Um, basically, you knit a section of ribbing and then you fold it over and seam it down so it has a sort of rounded edge. So, yeah, I'm really yeah, excited about it. I love that it. collar. Um, and then, the thing I like about this is that if you turn it inside out, it's the color work. You and the inside of things. <laughs> I love inside out knitting. Um, so, yeah, this is um, super fun. I. Um, was that, did you see that hat? Was that on Needles at the Ready? Whose podcast was it where they knit a hat? No, it was the Bearded Pearl mm -hmm. when, um, I don't remember if it was Caleb or Justin, mm -hmm. they did, a, they knit a hat and then they did the thing where they turned it inside yeah. out and yeah. I was like, oh my God, it's you. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, and so this was, again, this is the first of two. So I'm starting, um, so this is with, um, Feels like butter. Tastes like butter. Feels like butter. Feels like butter. <laughs> um, now you're getting me confused. Which is a um, acrylic yarn from I think. What is it? Um, Lion Brand yarns. Um, and the in this um, the red and the teal. And then for the second one, this is for a pair of twins. I'm just going to reverse the pattern. So um, I've already started on that one, but I've got about this much of the first loop done so it's not and i'm forcing cheap. john to not not stop well not show it to so that it's for the twins that live directly across the street in that way in yeah. fact if they were to like basically walk into their yard they would be able to see us doing right this. but yeah and so you so desperately want to show I really that. want to show them so yeah, actually, put it down so they can see your face i actually you um I, I saw them on a walk around the lake today and i was like it's like i was <laughs> like i've got a sweater i knit for your babies um <laughs> so um but what i'm doing with the second time for this one um for this next one so for this one i knit the body first and then knit the sleeves all right and this one i'm gonna knit the sleeves first and so that will i think eat your vitamins or yeah. eat your vegetables yeah not that the sleeves take very long to knit because right, they're so tiny. Right. But that's, you don't enjoy it. Not particularly. It's yeah. magic loop and yeah. yeah. I mean, it's again, the nice thing about, I mean, it's basically a big sock. Um, so yeah, it's done. So I'm very Yay. excited. Um, and I kind of want to, when I'm done with the two baby sweaters, I might knit myself the sweater. Because I really like it. I like the, I think the color work is just simple and easy. Yeah. Um, but it looks complicated. I mean, it just, yeah. It's a, it's a good pattern. So you didn't mind, because um, the way that you did it was you used interchangeable. Um, yeah. You didn't mind taking the tips off and changing the tips all, well, every you, four you rows to, or yeah, whatever? Yeah, I mean, that was that was a bit of a pain. Um, but, you know, I just had I had the two, di the two different size needles in my little knitting pouch, and, you know, it kept things, kept things fun. It was less fun on the sleeves because with the sleeves, you're changing to the larger size needle every four rows, and every four rows is about every... Yeah, you're putting that up in front of your face. I just... <laughs> um, I know that you always comment when I edit and you see that. You're like, oh, I put it in front of my face again. So I, you can put it in front of your face the whole episode if you that. want. Look at the old <laughs> Um, we will wash this before you get yeah. to that. Yes. It's already got, it's like funny, like everything in our house, like you knit it. And I think someone is commenting the close up shots. It's like, oh, look at my cat hair. Yeah. So don't It's get part white. of our DNA at this point. Right, right. White cats plus anything right. equals visible cat hair. So anyway. Um, Yay. Yeah. All right. So then I knit the flax light by Tin Can Knits. Somebody, so this, oh, okay, I'm jumping ahead. So this is Lion Brand ice cream yarn. And somebody pointed out, this is a different colorway, but somebody pointed out that it is what Lion Brand calls light, mm -hmm. which is actually more, I thought it corresponded to fingering, fingering right. but it actually corresponds to like worsted, light worsted. Okay, or like a sport? 
Yeah. 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 I forget what they. I forget what the person said in the pattern or yeah. in the in the comments, but it's not fingering. Mm -hmm. Doesn't really matter because the whole point of this. So. I knit, so, okay, again, I'm jumping around all over the place. I knit this for my nephew, Santiago. He is a little, like, five weeks old now. Mm -hmm. um, he's up to four and a half pounds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he was born a little early. So um, this is definitely not going to fit him. Um, but it will. Well, it will fit him. It's just that, like... This it's as big as he is. <laughs> Basically, you can put a belt on it and be like a sweater dress at this point <laughs> yes. with like big floopity arms. Um, yeah. So so the point is just to I knit it using the the needles in the pattern and um, using this yarn, and so I didn't care about gauge or whatever mm -hmm. because he'll grow into it. Right. Right. So that is. Um, so I loved I loved the pattern. Mm -hmm. It was um, it you know the thing about the flax and the flax light is they have these this garter panel that goes mm -hmm. down the sleeve, and then um, I really like this the yarn. The thing about this yarn is that it um, it, it self stripes, but because of depending on where you are, or how mm -hmm. thick the or how how the circumferences of what you're knitting, the stripes mm -hmm. are obviously going to be bigger. And then like with the garter stitch, it kind of created this cool effect where you've got on the border of where a color changes that kind of like the pearl bumps, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that. But the, the one thing about this is that when I joined, so I did, so, so this is top down. So mm -hmm. you knit this, you cast off for the sleeves, you knit the body, and then you go back, to, back, pick up the stitches and add the sleeves. Mm -hmm. When I did this one, because the garter, okay, I'm sorry, I'm trying to remember what happened. So the sleeves were done down to this white stripe mm -hmm. right here before you cast off f for the, mm -hmm. cast off the sleeve stitches. When I picked up the, sti the, the stitches again and started knitting it again, I realized that my garter panel was like eight too stitches too much or so. Yeah. I don't know how I did that. That's so when I did the flax, that happened to me all the time. Like my garter panel on the first sleeve I knit, it's like a, mm. it kind of zigzags because you sort of, you know, you... Well, yeah. I did what they recommended in the pattern, which is I put a stitch marker on okay. either side of the garter panel. So I didn't have a problem with it changing. It was just like when I had done it originally oh, it with the increases big. or something, I went, mm. I did too many. So gotcha. what ended up happening is I had to do a bunch of decreases mm -hmm. right when I picked it up. So you can kind of tell there's a little bump. <laughs> oh God, it's going to be so embarrassing for the, for the baby to wear that. I know, Santiago will just be shamed. So anyway, love it, love it, love it. Um, can't wait to mail it to them. I... Um, I'm just going to take a minute and talk about some other future Santiago projects, if that's okay. Absolutely. So I'm going to knit, so what I'm going to do for Santiago, I'm going to do in this yarn. Mm -hmm. And this yarn, I, I, was, I, I, rec I realized today that it is not self-striping mm -hmm. like this one. It's actually... Um, oh, gradient? Gr uh, gradient. Sure. I think that's what it's called, where it just fades from white to purple mm -hmm. and back again. Um, and so, and it's called Grape, mm -hmm. and it's again, it's the line brand ice cream yarn, and it's 100% acrylic. Mm -hmm. But um, so, I'm going to knit the Baby Sophisticate pattern, which is a cardigan, um, and it's by Lyndon Heflin. Okay. Um, so, it's a free pattern, um, and it's got, I can't wait to buy the little wooden buttons. Um, and do the little wooden buttons and everything. But it's, uh, yeah, so I'm excited to do that one. It's a pretty straightforward pattern. Mm -hmm. um, Is it knit? Do you have to knit and then seam it all together? It says it's a top-down design, meaning there's no seaming. And it looks like you knit it. Um, there are wrap and turns in it. Okay. Um, because that's listed in the abbreviations. Yeah. It says in this pa in this part of the pat at the beginning. It says in this part of the pattern you'll be knitting the yoke of the cardigan. Mm -hmm. The increases on either side of the marker start to shape the sleeves and the body. Okay. And and then you go back afterwards and pick up stitches to do the shawl collar. Gotcha. Interesting. Um, yeah. So I'm excited to do that. 
So then the other thing that I'm going to do is I bought a kit. It has I just bought it yesterday, and it's um, I get an, an email from a local yarn store that's about 45 minutes away mm -hmm. from a 45 minute drive in Stillwater, Minnesota, called Darn Knit Anyway, and they have a Maker's League. I don't know what you'd call it. Mm -hmm. um, club. Club, yeah, it's, sure, that sounds good. Um, and it's it's a different, I think they what it is is it's a different pat or a different designer every time mm -hmm. or a different pattern every time, and then they sell kits to go with it. Mm -hmm. And so this month, um, it is a pattern called um, Jerry the Monkey, <laughs> Jerry the Musical Monkey by Rebecca Danger. Mm -hmm. And so I'm trying to find a picture that I can... Um, I'll just insert a picture because yeah. I can't. I don't want to try to hold it up to the pattern. pattern. Yeah. So um, anyway, it's the. It's a stuffed monkey. It's a stuffed monkey. Yeah. So I'm going to make that one, um, and it's uh, the yarn that comes in the in the kit is a skein of Malabrigo Rios and a skein of Barocco Vintage Worsted. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so I'm excited to do that, and then I'm going to go ahead and jump into my new cast on, if that's okay. Of course. This bag, I found this bag in our box of bags, and I think... Is it reversible? It is. It's got cupcakes on the inside. Are you sure it's not inside out? Well, because I think it's reversible, because look at that. It looks correct. Huh. I, I mean, like I that think it's reversible, because okay. it's cupcakes on the inside. Right. I just feel like I've seen that before with cupcakes on the outside. Yeah, you've used it before. Okay, okay. Um, and I don't know if it's... I think that was a... Was that a gift from your mom? I think it's from my mom or from Cody. Okay. I have a memory of it. From Cody Knits In that podcast. Um, when we went to Georgia. Yeah. So I can't remember if um, it was from mom or if it was from... Okay. This was all tangled up. Let us know up. in the comments. <laughs> Yeah, Cody or mom, let us know in the comments. Okay, so anyway, this, this I decided, okay, th I want to talk a little bit about this because I, I don't remember if people commented on this or not, but basically what I ended up doing was when I bought this yarn, because I, what I, okay, the whole thing was that I had gone online to find acrylic fingering weight yarn. Yes. And I've gotten good recommendations from mm. folks um, since that episode. However, what I ended up buying, um, because I didn't know any better and didn't know what I was doing, mm -hmm. and it wasn't expensive yarn, mm -hmm. so I bought this yarn, which is True Boo. I think I called it Tri Boo before. Maybe it mm. is Tri Boo. It's kind of hard to tell because it's got a funky... I can't tell if that's True Boo or Tri Boo, but mm. um, it's 100% rayon from bamboo. Okay. And so folks talked about that being a good alternative to um, acrylic. Right. And or cotton. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, I mean it being a natural. It's bamboo instead of it being right. dead dinosaurs. Right. So, um, extruded dead dinosaurs. Extruded dead dinosaurs. Um, and I bought it because I liked the color, and mm. it's it's definitely it looks to be well. No, this one's light as well, which might which is supposedly fingering. No. -ish worsted light it's like light worsted or, or sport anyway i digress the point of this is it's very it's it's rayon so mm -hmm. it's very silk like mm -hmm. and drapey right so my fear is that if i were trying to try to knit like a garment out mm -hmm. of this or something like a sweater it's going to be like a yeah i'm going to be knitting santiago a caftan <laughs> Maybe something. he wants a calf. That's true. Right. Could be. There, or a moo moo. Or a moo moo, yeah. So, and that's not exactly what I'm going for. So I decided instead to knit a sock head mm -hmm. hat. And so this is, I've cast it on. Oh my God. And it's I so know tiny. it's teeny tiny, but that's because, I mean, it's very stretchy, first of mm -hmm. all. I mean, it's very stretchy, but it's. This is the sock head hat pattern, which is a free pattern, right. I think. I'm pretty sure. And it says for the baby size to do like a hundred and some stitches. Mm. I did 80. And okay. the reason I did that was because, like I said, Santiago is only four and a half pounds. And like when 
my brother sends pictures of him, it's like his head is like fits in the palm of my brother's hand. Yeah. So I figured I could do and I wanted to do something that's going to be something he can wear sooner than later. Right. So I did do the 80 stitches and um, I guess what I'm really surprised about is if you feel that I was fe I was mm -hmm. figuring it wouldn't be stretchy it wouldn't mm -hmm. the rib wouldn't do mm -hmm. that negative ease thing mm -hmm. where it's yeah where it doesn't stretch and I'll show close-ups of this stuff but it's turning out to be much more like um, normal fabric than okay. I anticipated. It's very soft. Right. You just that was because of the rayon, basically. I thought it was going to be like limp. Oh right. You know, like the, because if you feel the yarn, it's yeah, just it feels so, very like it's not squishy. Right. Like a like a wool or an acrylic. It's not. There's no squish to it. So I just figured. I bet, it, the, I bet though, when you get into the actual hat bit, which will be good for the sock hat, it'll be very floopy. Yes, which yeah. I think that that's exactly what mm -hmm. I was thinking was it, it'll be. With that, it's a floopy. Yeah, it'll be a really <laughs> cute floopy hat. Yeah. So what I decided to do, I was trying to figure out what how to do like the combination of colors mm -hmm. with this. So I think what I'm going to do is do a you do, do stripes. Three, you can do all three of them. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'm going to keep the rib. Yeah. In one color. Yeah. And it's like three inches of rib. I mm -hmm. think I'm going to do, and then I'm going to do stripes of all three colors oh, nice. for the. You could do intarsia for the hat. No, I don't want to. No, no. I'm not going to complicate. Do intarsia in the round. I'm doing a weird yarn, and I'm doing a baby pattern. I love that I'm knitting a hat on nine-inch circulars. That's the other thing too. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So I'm going to do stripes of all three colors, and then I think now that I've done this, mm -hmm. and I can tell already that this. Is going to be fine. It's going to be fine. It, and yeah. it makes a fun fabric. I'm going to do, I think I can do baby booties. Sure. With this and they'll actually be really nice. And it doesn't, because it, they can be more like, um, they don't have to be wintry. You know, they right. can be a yeah. little bit lighter. So I'm going to do some socks with these too. For sure. So that's my new cast, one of my new cast-ons, or is my new cast-on. Cool. I think I'm almost done with all of my, talking about all of my knitting. <laughs> yeah, I think I've got one more knitting and then acquisitions. Yeah, I have one more thing, just a quick update on something. Why so. don't you do that and then I'll do mine. And okay. Then... So the last thing I wanted to, to do was I showed the finished sock for, um, no, that's the one I'm working on. I, I showed the finished sock last time for the Princess Bride kit that um, Nancy um, from Trilogy Yarns. So yeah, so I showed this last time, but I um, am almost done with the second one. Yay! So Sucks for me. yeah, so yeah, that's that's where I'm at with this. Oh, that's why that's why I was. I, I knew I wanted to talk about this for a reason. So thanks to all of you who, through mine and John's trauma with the magic knot, everybody's like recommending the Russian join. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable how well that join works. Uh -huh. I watched a very pink knits tutorial, and just at, for anybody who doesn't know what that is, basically you take your yarn and you kind of open the plies, you fold one yarn back on itself, and weave the yarn into itself, uh -huh. and it creates a loop. Then you take your thread your yarn that you're joining and you do the same thing but you bring it through that loop that you've created by right. threading the yarn back and it it is super strong yeah um so i did that with this yeah this heel mm -hmm. no that's the finished sock i did that with this heel and it i mean it was super strong and there's it's very easy to knit with mm -hmm. there's it's not a weird Right, not, it looks fine. There's right. no weird knot in the middle of your, like, yeah. with the magic knot, and it, you can just snip off, you know, the the ends mm -hmm. that get woven into itself or whatever. Right. So, anyway, thanks to everybody who showed yeah, that. Yeah, I may, when I return back to the socks, I may do that. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to do that whenever I can, because, yeah. I mean, it was fun to do, <laughs> too. Cool. Not like a magic knot, but it's just a boring knot, so... So that's where I'm at. That's cool. So you have a new, another work in progress. I have a new work in progress. Um, so I cast this on, I think yesterday or the day after, earlier, a couple days ago. 
Um, so this is a, I think I mentioned it, this is a um, cowl I'm working on, and it's called the 66, 66 Triangle Cowl, Triangles Cowl by Benjamin Matthews Designs, and he's the um, designer who did that test knit for a couple of weeks ago, the hat. Oh yeah, with the chevrons. Chevrons, and I'm using these two yarns. Um, so basically the, the pattern is, it's basically a cowl with color work triangles. So these two yarns are, these are the skeins, and the two yarns are, this is Lady Dye Yarns, um, DK, they're both DKs, and this one's called Georgia Pecan. Pecan. And this one is from Urban Girl Yarns, and this one is called Kaleidoscope. So, um, I'm sorry to interrupt. I we're sitting outside, obviously, mm -hmm. and it's August second. second, yeah, and it is freezing. <laughs> it's not freezing; it's just not hot. It's like it's like sixty degrees. Yeah, we're having a cold front. So, <sighs> okay, sorry. Go ahead. So anyway, um, it is just a color work cowl, and I'll sort of hold this up a little bit. So basically, it's just a series of triangles that. Are knit like that. So I'm through the I'm first. Sorry, I'm sorry. It's 71 degrees. <laughs> oh, we're so fragile. I know. So anyway, it's um, stranded color work. Here's what the inside looks like. Very exciting. Um, so yeah. I think that color combination is. Yeah, it's it magnificent. Really, it does a great job of showing off the blue. Because I think if you were to do something with that blue by itself. Yeah. But it against that pecan, that yeah. orangey, rusty color, it yeah. really jumps I out. I think it looks great. And you I, know what it does? It emphasizes the purple. Yeah. Well, what I like, and the other thing I'm sort of learning, which is kind of fun, is there's yarn dominance, color dominance in the strand of knitting. So depending on like where you put the floats, um, things pop out better. So oh. um, basically, if you have your yarn the yarn in your left hand basically has color dominance, so it tends to pop more. There's something to do with, I read all about it, and long and short story is your left yarn, um, the loops are a little bigger. Oh. And so I'm making sure the blue is always in my left yarn, it sort of just, it pops better. Oh. Um, because what I was doing is, for the first little bit, I was, for the first, so the way I do um, color work is I do it inside out Portuguese knit. So it's like, so it's really easy to um, do a float when you're floating the left yarn or the right yarn. But um, when you do the right yarn or the left yarn, it's a little tougher. So I switched the, which yarn is in which position. You're, you don't know what I'm talking about, do you? Are you just Yeah, trying? no, I do. Okay, I couldn't tell if you were like, Listening or space it out. No, I'm listening. Okay. <laughs> I'm looking at the color and I'm because I'm trying to understand because I don't Portuguese knit. Right. But it's like um but it's it's just easier to trap the float from it's easier to trap the float one way than the other way. And so what I did when I Oh, went, that's true of because yeah. when I when I do yeah. the color work I have I do English in one hand and continental mm -hmm. with the other. And right. yeah. So with one, I said that wrong. But, but you know so what I, mean. what I started doing is I switched which one was in front when the blue got more prominent, and I realized that it sort of going, started going to the background. So I switched it over. Oh, so I, it's gosh, kind of fun. That's that's interesting. So yeah, um, so yeah, I've it's a pretty it's a it's a fast knit. Um, it's a pretty easy pattern, um, and it is. Um, definitely a good TV knit because once you figure out it's the same 12 stitch repeat repeated uh, plus it's a triangle so you know right so you can, you can, you can read it you can read it pretty easily so yeah this is is that a super are those super wash mm -hmm. yeah and then um, what was the other question I had so oh all right so you were you and I were talking about the fact that you're gonna have to do a Tubular cast off or yeah. bind off. Yeah. So the thing I I didn't talk about it in the the hat, but I I learned to do a tubular cast on. I finally did one. This is a tubular cast on, um, and so which it's really really quite fun. And the nice thing about it is the way that it, the one that I did this time is it's provisional tubular cast on. 
Um, and I found one, I think it's on Blueprint, where you can not do a crochet hook, but you just use waste yarn and cast on stitches. Oh. So. Oh, I remember you saying waste yarn didn't quite. Yeah. So, so one, you didn't crochet a chain. I did not crochet a chain, mm. which um, I can, that's what I did for the last half. But so what's kind of fun about that is number one, you, um, the difference is you can't pull it out as easily because it's knit. Mm. It's not crochet, it's, so it's harder to pull out. Oh, okay. So I just sort of cut it all out. But the nice thing is you can just sort of do a, you cast on half the stitches, and I hate casting on. Yeah. Um, and then you just work these like couple of rows before you start the ribbing. So anyway, super excited. But yeah, now I'm, Wait, now there's. So you, you knit a couple rows before you start the ribbing? Yeah. And that's what creates the cast on. Mm -hmm. Oh, because it looks seamless. It doesn't look like you have a couple of knit rows. You there's so right, right there's a little bit of a break. Yeah. Before the join, because basically what you do is you you basically double knit a couple of rows, that and that establishes the tube, so to speak. Mm. So, yeah. Anyway, but I guess the pressure is now I need to have a really cool cast off. Yeah. So to match the really cool cast on. But yeah, tubular cast ons. Um, I've been meaning to figure out how to do this for a long time, and I finally did. They're not bad. Oh, speaking of that, I'm going to go back to the baby sweater for a minute because mm -hmm. I forgot about this. So when I cast off this sleeve, I did this mm -hmm. sleeve first, and I noticed that it's, I, I bound off loosely, but it's there's no stretchiness mm -hmm. in this cast off, mm -hmm. bind off. And so I was worried a little bit. I think. Somebody mentioned that you you want to make sure you're doing stretchy cast offs and cast on and bind off because for babies, for babies so you can so it's easy to get it on them. Mm -hmm. And so I, it was after I had done this that I was like, oh, you know, this is mm -hmm. not stretchy at all. So then I went and found a stretchy bind off. So I don't know if you can tell, but it's like if you go like this, there's no stretch to it. Mm -hmm. But then I went and um, there's a cast on and now I think it's simple stretchy cast on or something mm -hmm. like that and basically what you do is you when you cast off you get two stitches on the right needle and then you either knit through the back loop mm -hmm. or you purl yep. together um, and that's what reduces your stitches yep and this this is like super yeah, stretchy. that's my standard that's my standard cast off. oh now. is it oh or okay yeah yeah so it, it's it makes it open up a little bit mm -hmm. it's not as neat looking as yeah. this but that doesn't really matter when in this situation because you want it to be easy for them to get the sweater on and off yeah so since you were talking about bind offs yeah. i forgot about that so yeah i will um yeah learn a tubular bind off which i we were on we were talking to some folks and they were talking someone was talking about the really terrible bind off that you with the tapestry needle Ew. i know yeah so we'll see about that yeah, cool. All right, so do you have acquisitions? I have acquisitions. Do you want to talk about the knit along or? Um, let's do that after the acquisitions. Okay. So um, these are my acquisitions. So um, this was, um, I ordered this. It's a company called Ravenswood Fiber Company. Um, that's their logo. Super cute. They're Canadian. So um, I ordered three skeins of DK from them because I can't really, I can't stop ordering DK. Um, <laughs> because now I start, I start pairing stuff. So um, this is all um, Super Rush Merino. Um, and this first one is called Birch. Um, it's super squishy, super soft. Um, Watch the pole, yeah. you're gonna hide it. So it's called Birch. So it's this white with these sort of flecks of charcoal gray and stuff like that. So that's really pretty. Um, I was thinking this would be a good thing to do for a color work pattern, be like the background color. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really cool. And then these two, this one's called Autumn Drive. I really like that. It's got the, I don't know, it looks like an Autumn Drive. <laughs> yes. Um, and this is. I like the dark color that's almost got blue in it. Yeah. It almost has blue in it. Yeah, I really, and I don't know, I'll have to see, I wonder if this knits up as stripes or. 
Yeah, I'm interested to see that too. Yeah, me too. I should see if they have it on their web because some some sites have like a swatch Sample of it knitted or a up, swatch which is right. nice. You know, I I like the surprise. I mean, I know sometimes you don't want a surprise if you're right. like you want a specific thing. Like if right. you want self striping, you want to know. Right. <laughs> but sometimes it's it's yeah, fun for it to reveal it like. itself. Yeah. So that's this one. It's called Autumn Drive. Um, these are from Nova Scotia. That's cool. Oh, yeah. And then this one is called um, Friday Night Fire Pit. And I feel like this is like, I like these two. I feel like this is like, they feel like they're in the same family. But this one's like turned up to be brighter. So. Mm, yeah, that's a good point. So, yeah, I really like these. Um, and thank you to everyone. They sent a nice little note. So, um, because, you know, mails are a little slow these days. Yeah. Especially across Coming international from, boundaries. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I, I don't know what I'm going to do with these, but I really like them. They're nice and squishy, and um, I just love these colors. Yeah. Um, it's always, like, a little weird. I, I think one of the things that's interesting about kind of buying yarn right now is because I'm buying a lot more online than I buy. Usually go to a store. Mm -hmm. So you're a little... There can be a little bit of a... Um, you don't know what you're getting. You don't know exactly what you're getting, and yeah. like these, I'm just blown away. I like them; <laughs> they look better. They look great. So. Yeah, yeah, and it's 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 been kind of fun because we've been or I've been buying directly from dyers, mm -hmm. but then also buying from local yarn stores. Yeah. So um, that's been kind of fun. Although I also did buy from Joanne, which well, is not a local I mean, yarn if store. If you're buying if you're buying acrylic baby yarn, I think yeah, <laughs> maybe there is some really nice you know, independent people dying. I don't even know, like, how is it? How yeah, I don't is, know how you, yeah. How is it, is acrylic yarn is probably, it's probably a big chemical bath. And like, it's, <laughs> it's like, a big it's bat. like, it's like the Joker, the factor in the Joker. <laughs> Turned into the Joker. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I'm really excited. I'm especially, you know, this is kind of, I tend to buy a lot of yarn that's like this. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I need to at least have a couple of things um, because that that's are, interesting. I mean, it's it's kind of sort of one color, but it's yeah. still interesting. Yeah. I was thinking, like, DK socks exist. Mm. Um, and I was thinking maybe do a pair of, like, DK socks with this. Yeah. Oh, I was going to ask. So what is the weight and the length, the amount? This is 200 meters, whatever okay. those are. So 100 grams. 100 grams, yeah. yeah. Okay. So I, mean, I think usually um, DK is, like, 200 and... 13 or 230 yards so yeah it just depends on the yeah. base yeah cool all right well i'm going to show mine now yeah. or is that all of yours that you've got yes that is all I, i'm still waiting on one more thing yeah. so but that's gonna be a surprise when it comes very right. oh right because it's a mystery it's a mystery box i went a little crazy after i um john knit that sweater for the feels like butter yarn and mm -hmm. bought six skeins of it because I think it'll be great for baby stuff oh yeah for sure so what's interesting is most of it has this label the standard lion brand mm -hmm. looking label but this one has kind of a fun interesting care okay, dogs lost his mind um an interesting it says a star is born mm -hmm. I don't know why this label is different um, but anyway, so this is the teal though. Is, did yours label look, did your label look like that for the teal? Um, let me see. No, no, yours is the standard. Yeah. So anyway, these are the colors that John bought. Yeah. Um, for the, that he's using. And if I baby. run out of yarn, I'm going to use those for that. Okay. Um, so this is red and teal. Mm -hmm. Those are the colorway names. It's uh, hundred percent polyester and it's, um, hundred grams. It's right. It's what they call medium. Okay. Whatever that means. Which I think is, which is, I think is worsted. Probably. Yeah. 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 Um, so it's uh, 218 yards. Mm -hmm. So then I got two more colors. They didn't really have a lot. They, mm -hmm. it's like they. Oh, there's that weird label again. Mm -hmm. um, it was almost like it was like a lot of. It wasn't. What am I trying to say? It was like not picked over, but like a right. lot of people. They were out of a lot of their yeah. stock. And so this is brown, mm -hmm. and this is cranberry. Okay. And then I bought white and black mm -hmm. because I, at some point, want to do some colorway 
putting his name on stuff. Sure. So I wanted to have white and black to do that with. Our dog is eating milkweed. I'm sure that's really good for him. Why would he eat a milkweed bloom? Well, it looks like a ball. Oh, yeah. He's playing with it. Okay. He's not eating. He, it's a toy now. Yeah, Our it's, dog it's is... It's a toy that's going to fall apart pretty easily. Yeah, like all of his toys. <sighs> anyway. So, yeah. So I bought all of that. I also bought some... Um, I bought this from Joanne, and I bought, which is, I guess not everybody knows, Joanne is a big box yarn or big box craft chain in mm -hmm. the United States. Um, and then I bought three... Three more of the three sugar or, and spice. Yeah, sugar and cream. Okay. Not sugar and spice. Sugar and cream yarn, just for dishcloths and stuff. Yay. All right. So we, we, we somehow have not managed to reduce our staff at all. Hey, Harris, <laughs> the monarch butterflies want that. Don't kill the milkweed. Yeah, let him do it. He doesn't. It's fine. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> our dog is a disaster. Um, all right. Should we talk about our knit along? Yes. All right. So it we have done. wrapped up our knit along. So we did a knit along mm -hmm. that featured the intarsia and entrelac techniques. And neither one of us finished our project. And neither, but we got a lot of really nice support from our viewers that, that it's okay. And we did learn. I mean, I think that was oh, kind yeah. of the whole, the whole point of it is that, you know, it was two new techniques we'd never tried before and um, they were both learning experiences. Yes. So um, what we're gonna do now mm -hmm. is we are going to insert a section where we, we no I'm not, we gotta do this first. Yeah. So so we did entrelock and intarsia techniques and it we did it over a couple months or was it three, three months? months? Three yeah, months, yeah, from May to through to the end of July. And so we oh, thank you to Nancy from Trilogy Yarns. Trilogy Yarns who is somewhere in Washington there. State. And that was a joke because I I think it was she lived in a different city according to me every yeah. episode. Um, but she's from Walla Walla. <laughs> she's from Acme, Washington. So, so anyway, the, it was, Nancy was the the she inspiration because she donated prizes to us. She donated several skeins of yarn. Um, some is in our stash right now, and we're going to do some projects with it. But and one is in Betty Ann's hot little hands. Yes, she finally got it. She finally got her package. Um, with her socks that I made her, mm -hmm. as well as the yarn from Nancy. And then I had not been saying this earlier, but when I was there, I don't remember when it was, but I borrowed her 2.5 millimeter DPNs out of her Knit Picks DPNs mm -hmm. kit. And you would think that I had stolen her. Those are irreplaceable. Well, and not to mention the fact, I mean, Does she, she doesn't watch this um, podcast, so she won't hear this. <laughs> <laughs> but like, she's ever gonna use those. So anyway, I bought just a set of the 2.5 millimeter DPNs so that she can put it back in her kit. You should have gotten the ones you got from her, like snap from half <laughs> and <sent> them back. <laughs> or like flimsily tape them together and see if she ever noticed. <laughs> It's like when you would steal booze from your parents and like water it down and like hope they never noticed because they never drank did it. Did you do that? I yes. never did that. Yeah. So you actually like put water back in? Yeah, it was like tequila. And because I knew, so. I always thought that was like a like an urban legend that people actually did yeah. that. Because I knew that my parents Because I was didn't. a good kid. I didn't drink until yeah, college. So we lived right near the high school. So we came mm. home during lunch and made margaritas, or what a 17-year-old thinks margaritas are like. You're kidding me. No. Did you go back to school? Of course. Oh we were seniors. We were so oh, you were seniors. Okay, that makes a little more sense. I mean, yeah, this isn't like, you know, this is like... This, this is, isn't like freshman year. No, this is like, this is like we'd already applied to college. It's like, what are you going to do to us, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, so we walked back over lunch to our house. Or, and then we would, I, so we had this like tequila, that, like we had three bottles of it because I think my parents did a party once they overbought. And so I knew they would never, ever mm. open that final bottle. So yeah. And then finally, I think one time I was like home for Christmas and I'm like, as I look at the tequila. <laughs> so we all thought it was really funny. <laughs> but anyway, you should, you should have done that for the thing and then yes. see if she ever noticed. Yes. Long story, right. not so long. Anyway, so, I was a bad child. So yeah, sounds like it. So we have a, a winner from Instagram. We pulled 
from the posts um, with the people that use the hashtag sweet tea 2020 cal uh-huh. um, and I can't remember how many posts there were oh it was 49 uh-huh. and um, we used a random number generator and number 48 one uh-huh. which is Randy Hardy um, and it was the is the Instagram post and she did the she did this amazing baby yoda dice bag yeah in tarja so we actually tarja. We, we talk about it in a little bit yeah so we're going to show both of the patterns um on the screen in a yeah. minute so um so she won the instagram post and then the in tarja instagram yeah and then um for the ravelry finished objects we pulled a random number generator there were 27 finished objects and number 13, who is Phobivore uh-huh. on Ravelry, which is actually, Car- her name's Carmen, and she lives in Australia. So she won, um, and she did this awesome hat. And the thing, it's a it's an, an entrelock hat, so it's kind of cool because the Instagram winner was in Tarja, uh-huh. and the Ravelry person was entrelock. But the, um, the entrelock hat... Sh- was written in the pattern was written in chinese Uh and then she says but she managed to follow the youtube instructions so i was just kind of like i was impressed yeah well because you were trying to look at that french pattern oh yeah so there's a there's a was it a baby i must have been a baby pattern because that's all i've looked at today um but there was a pattern and it was in french and i speak enough french to and plus, the the way it was written is the same way an English pattern right. would be written out, you know, with the abbreviations. And so it's like, you can I think GGP is. is a slip slip knit or something. Right. I can't remember what right. they were, but um, it. So I I'm kind of interested to try out some French patterns just because I think it would be fun to challenge myself and do that. But anyway, she did she did it with Chinese. Yeah. With, with I don't know which. That's like a whole next level. Yeah, I don't know which of the Chinese languages it was. I mean, it, it's it characters was using the. the same, char- I so. think the characters are yeah. the same. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, congratulations to you guys. So if you'll reach out to us, either via Instagram direct message or via Ravelry, and. Um, let us know your address, then we will get those out to you. Oh, and the other thing is whomever responds first um, can have your pick, um, and then we'll give the other part. I mean, they're very, they're similar, and they're both yeah. wonderful. So this one is the Conquest, which it's got the navy mm-hmm. blue, and it's a little darker, and then this one is Titan, um, which has more of the creams, and mm-hmm. it's got some green speckles in it and such. So, yeah. yeah. So congratulations, and thank you, thank you, thank you to Nancy, who was so generous. And thank you for everyone. As I said, one of the things that was really fun about this is we were learning, and um, thank you for everyone who was very nice to us and helped us out as we figured stuff out. Yeah. So I think, you yeah. know, like I was struggling with the bobbins and stuff like that, and people were like, do that, do that, do that. So it was really, really cool. Yeah, so the, the one of the things that, um, you know, I enjoyed through this process is that the longer we've done this we've been doing this for a couple years now and i try to pay attention to the comments it's Mm -hmm. hard sometimes if you get busy because they're you know to respond to Mm -hmm. all of them or acknowledge all of them but i start to recognize the names Mm -hmm. and sometimes people's youtube uh, username uh-huh. is different than obviously different than their real name and then different than their Ravelry name and it's hard for me and to their Instagram and their Instagram right. so it's hard for me to connect all the dots mm-hmm. and so it's like I'll talk to someone and not realize that it's right you know somebody that I yeah. have talked to in another venue um, or somebody that I've had a knit night with because I know like Vicki Neal who I mm-hmm. we've been on knit nights with before I didn't recognize that she was the same person that was commenting in the comments she's like yeah I'm the one who said that <laughs> so um, so anyway that's one of the things that I've liked about this is because mm-hmm. I'm starting to connect some of those yeah. dots especially when like um, Susanna who is a uh, a frequent commenter in our, mm-hmm. you know, on our YouTube yeah. videos, and she and I talk, and she has all, always has great comments and great rec- re- ideas and things, and so she did, and she actually finished the hat, mm-hmm. and um, so it's like neat to make that connection and see her pictures mm-hmm. on the finished objects and Ravelry and stuff. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to pause and we're going to actually insert a video 
um, where we show some of the um, finished, objects. finished objects and, and actually show all of the finished objects um, because we, uh, so it's about 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. So if you're, I think it's fun to look through all of them, but if you wanna, if you wanna jump to Angela Lansbury, then you can fast forward about 10 or 12 minutes. Yep. All right, we thought we'd do something a little differently this time. Um, and we've done this before where we've recorded our screen, but um, we thought this would be a fun way to review the finished objects. There's only about 28, so it makes it, or 27 actually, so it makes it a little more manageable. Um, and so we'll, we'll go through these quickly. But I wanted to um, feature, mm -hmm. you know, the people who took the time to, and that's why we do these knit-alongs. So um, first of all, I want to give a shout out to our friend Lucy, um, who we um, have knit nights with, and so it's awesome. She did a, a few different projects, and I thought it was really smart that she did a dishcloth. Right. Because that helped her figure out how it worked, and that's probably what I should have done well, <laughs> instead of the hat that didn't work, didn't fin get finished. Yeah. So. No, that's cool. I, I think, I always think that, you know... What were you going to say? Nothing. I'm sorry. I lost my <laughs> chain of thought. This is going to be a disaster. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is a beautiful baby blanket. I, I'm. This is given. This is from Annie Vin, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, and I think this is a really good use of Entrelock, and it's kind of inspiring me to knit stuff for my new nephew. So yeah, that was a good one. Um, this one I love. Um, this is Intarja. This is Intarja, and this is a Star Trek themed hat. Yeah. So very awesome. Love the picture. Nerd knits always get extra points. Yes, that's true. Um, and then this one was really um, special. Um, and so she um, did a yarn bombing technique, or she said that um, uh, that it's um, in memoriam of her, her of the son that she lost. And so it's a really she increases the numbers and stuff over time and it's in tarja and we saw a lot of yarn bombing when we were in south america actually mm -hmm. it was like all over the place which is really interesting um so anyway that i just i thought this was a really special um way to um do the memoriam mm -hmm. and it's a cool way to come back to it and keep increasing the years and stuff like that so um, then another and then, baby blanket. Oh, another baby blanket, which is unbelievable. Yeah. Um, but I liked the intarsia technique. I'm sorry, entrelock technique mm -hmm. enough that um, I think it would be fun to do a baby blanket. I would just have to get some big yarn or, yeah. some, you know, some chunky weight yarn or yeah. something like that. Um, then Lucy's got another. Um, she actually finished a hat successfully. <laughs> <laughs> and this looks like this yarn... Um, Looks almost like it's got a tweed. It's mm -hmm. got it's like a tweed yarn. So I really like the colors and such. Um, this one is the one that kind of blew John's mind. Yeah. So do you want to talk about this one? Yeah. So when I had started doing the, my idea for this was to do an um, intarsia argyle cowl, and actually I found like one pattern online, and then it looked too hard. So I got to the <laughs> socks, which turned out to be also too hard, but. Um, this is exactly what I would have knitted had I figured it out. So I really, I love this. It's really cool. And I like the fact, so it's got the intarsia on the outside and then it's got line, it's lined on the inside. So I, that one is very, very inspiring. So, so this says John was the inspiration for I the know. project. So the, is this the snuggle is real pattern just modified? I think it's sort of taking the construction behind it and doing, I mean, it. you know, it's. Oh, a, it's because it's, I think. Yeah, it's a drawstring two two layered cowl. So yeah, she so, so she inter she it was such a such fun to knit that I turned my intarsia argyle cowl into a reversible hoodie style. Cowl. Okay, yeah, gotcha. that's pretty awesome. All right, um, this next one is another blanket, and I cannot believe and that's crocheted. So oh, that's crocheted. Okay, I was gonna mm -hmm. say that looks different than knitting. I was gonna say I can't believe the how different it looks. Mm -hmm. um, I was assuming it was knitted, but yeah, that, I'm glad you pointed that out. But that I love the colors on this, mm -hmm. and I just think that's beautiful. And it's interesting that the crochet does look so much like the knitted mm -hmm. stuff. So, 
Um, then this is the Bat Lady Knits, um, who always posts great comments on our videos, and I love the colors of mm -hmm. this uh, scarf. Well, what I kind of cool about the Entrelock stuff is you can take, I mean, it's a good scrappy yarn project because you could, oh, yeah. you know, take a bunch of skeins that you have a little bit of everything in and just sort of toss it all together. So that's awesome. Yeah, that's a good point. That's another way to, to do like a, um, like a scrappy, scrappy blanket yeah, or for sure. things like that. Yeah. Another one. Another one from the Bat Lady Knits and the colors again. Those colors are awesome. Yeah. Um, so this actually is our winner for the knit along, which we will have already announced before we insert this mm -hmm. video, this part of the video in. But what blew my mind was that she said that it. Well, and actually, I looked, and the pattern is written in with Chinese characters. Mm -hmm. But she said that um, she found the YouTube. I, I just it blew my mind how. Well, this morning you were trying to read a pattern in French. Yeah. And that was... I think I'm going to talk about that okay. in the other part of the podcast, too. So. Okay, cut that part out then. <laughs> um, so this is a, a cowl. Mm -hmm. um, knitting by the Lake. I really like that screen name. Um, and so I think... Oh, yeah, that's right. She did. A, she posted a hat and a cowl together. And I, I love that. The, so that yarn is the... I think it's got silk in it or mm -hmm. it's 100%. I don't know exactly what that... But silk garden light, and so it really gives a really neat sheen to the mm -hmm. colors, and that that just that pattern on that hat's just beautiful. Yeah. Um, so then, uh, Lucy did another um, dishcloth. I love her the the colors that she mixed together there. Um, and then a beautiful cowl and she says um that she loved learning something new and that's a little bit more like it looks like she used a i'm gonna click on the picture see if i can zoom in a little yeah, bit a single skein oh, yeah. where it, sort of like the one that you were doing where it sort of went through oh yeah you're right because it fades it's like mm -hmm. it's got fades the... in and fades out yeah very cool. that's cool i like the i love that color those two that gray and the purple together yeah is it gray and purple just checking. Um, With multicolored blips. You saw the kind of rainbowy mm -hmm. multicolor. Okay. Um, these are awesome. Yeah. Um, so it's a, uh, the little bush baby. She did a, a birthday present for her dad, which is, those are awesome. Yeah. Um, and then Carrie Penny did some dish cloths, it looks like. Mm -hmm. I love the Christmassy color one. Uh, and this is a... Um, a cowl and the same two cowls or no it's the same one i think it's just different no, lighting scroll down huh it's just the lighting is different. okay they look like one looks like natural light and the other looks like indoor gotcha. light gotcha. but um teresa shapes is the one who did the entrelock hat that i pat that i didn't that i attempted <laughs> gotcha gotcha um and then she Sorry. also did a, a Parallelo hat by Wooly Warmhead. It, mm -hmm. one is neat. So she did actually did an Intarsia project, and then she did mm -hmm. a um, Entrelock project, which is really cool. Um, but the colors are really great. And then it says the hat is worked sideways in the orange room, isn't it? Using Intarsia, as are the oh the orange lines. I didn't gotcha. notice the, the lines. I kind of assumed it was like a faded, mm -hmm. faded colors or not faded, but like a great. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mixed up colors. Um, oh, I like those. Yeah, those those look very would be very good for for a Minnesota winter. Yeah. <laughs> so good job on that one, Blecky. And this one, just like total nerd amazingness. Yeah, made of the pattern too. Wow. I know, baby God, Yoda. How did you? How bag. do you just come up with a baby Yoda pattern? And and Randy. And how a cat looks like. Ours. Yeah, it looks just like our cat, one of our cats. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, so this is a beautiful blanket. I think this one, is this one crochet? Yeah, it's Tunisian. Oh, yeah, Tunisian, Tunisian crochet. Cool, yeah, that's very neat looking. I mean, it's just beautiful how neat it is. Yeah. Neat and, I mean, like, tidy and mm -hmm. whatever. Can't think of the word, but 
And it's huge. Yeah. That's awesome. So then... This, oh, and this one blew my mind, too. Yeah, let's see if we can get into more pictures here. So, yeah, these... It's like an intarsia cardigan. Yeah. Oh, it's the face of the moon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it's a test knit, she said. Yeah. So, yeah. That's gorgeous. And then the yarn that she used was paint box. I haven't heard of that label before. Moon Cardi, that's mm -hmm. what it's called. Yeah, so. And who's the... This was um, Fur. Ariana Frosca, it's the designer. Um, so then we have a, it's like a, it's an entrelac cube, mm -hmm. and it reminded me of I used to make these. Um, what's the Japanese paper folding? Origami. Origami. I could only think of entrelac. The origami. Um, these origami things where you would make these diamond shapes out of paper mm. and then you could piece them together and you could make a cube or you could you could just keep adding them mm -hmm. and make a, a more more and more complex shape and that's kind of what that reminds me of yeah all right page two i've got a few more here so oh. here is here's susanna's um uh, Entre lock hat that um, she actually finished. And that's the same pattern the, as yours, right? Yeah, the, she uh, actually finished up. the pattern and I, the one that I did not finish. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's, um, she used some really cool yarn, kind of similar to the yarn I was using, um, where it's multicolored um, rather than coloring every mm -hmm. square or getting a different yarn for every square. So she did a great job with that. All right, and then this is a, a wall hanging. Yeah. I never thought about that. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. It looks like lace knitting. Is that what the technique is? You know, knitting yeah. and then with lace sections and stuff? Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Very cool. All right, and then... Oh, then finally... Dustin, uh... I'm throwing oh. myself on the mercy of the court. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Daryl, I think it's just said your name was Dustin. Sorry about that, Daryl. That is awesome. Yeah, I'm so that's, jealous. I know. That's definitely on both of our, our to knit lists. Yeah, so great sure. job on that. Yeah. Great, great job. All right. All right. Thank you so much to everybody who participated in the knit along, and we can't look, can't wait to do our next one. So it would seem that about 7.30 to 8 o'clock on a Sunday is when all of the planes leave the airport. Yes. All right. So, okay, I think it's time to talk about our Angela Lansbury update. Yeah. Um, before we do that, we should. I need to do the BA update because I don't want to forget about it. Um, so Betty Ann is Scott's mom. We love her. She is... Scott calls her the best mom mother ever. She is the best mother-in-law I've ever had. <laughs> no, she's 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 the a only mother-in-law you've ever had. She's a delightful human being, and um, mm. so unfortunately, she she gets a little carried away with stuff. And so, like most BA updates, this is both an update, but it's mostly a warning. Okay. So, um, what happened was so we are all. We have the new baby, and so there's lots of emails going back and forth from everybody. And so the other day I got an email from Betty Ann, and it looked a little strange. Um, like, not your typical email. And I almost thought it was, like, a spam email, or she'd gotten hacked. Well, her, her, all of her emails are spam emails, in my opinion. But. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, anyway, because it was, just, it was just, you know, you sort of look at an email, the subject line's a little strange, and... And then I noticed, you know how some people like, so um, some people spell words wrong the whole time. So like, I can't, <laughs> And that's how it's a clue that it's spam yeah, or whatever, yeah. Right, or it's that right person. Or so phishing like, or whatever. So for example, I can't spell the word necessary ever. I really? Can't. No, Sorry, I don't. Sorry, hang on. There's like a bald eagle or something that just flew by. No, oh, cool. Okay, go ahead. So anyway, I can't spell the word necessary. And so Betty Ann cannot spell the word homicide. She spells it with an S every time. Okay. So. How many times? 
Well, she does like true crime. Right. And she so loves in to this watch email, those cop shows. I noticed that homicide was spelled with an S. <laughs> Why so, was she talking about homicide? Just, just wait. So I'm like, wait, this, this is probably actually written by Betty Ann. Oh, because she spelled, you homicide. know, we all know she can't spell the word homicide. homicide right. right. So it's, she spells it H-O-M-I-S-I-D-E. Okay. Like, anyway. Um, so I click through, I'm, you know, I put all my spam blockers up and like get into safe mode <laughs> <laughs> and click on the link. Which we all have to do when there's, <laughs> when an inter- with an interaction with her. Right, right. <laughs> So click on it, and so Betty Ann has started a new business. Okay. And it combines her two favorite things in the world, one of which you've already mentioned. True crime. Mm-hmm. And collectible dolls. <laughs> so. Oh, yeah. I forgot about well, how much she loves the collectible dolls. Yeah. American Girl dolls, specifically. Exactly. Okay. So it's called, it's called B.A.'s Annabelle's. And what it seems to be selling... Okay, the irony about that is that Annabelle is her aunt that she was named after. Yeah, but no, anyway, go ahead. There, Sorry. there are lots of layers. Lots of layers. So these, she's selling these on like the dark web version of Etsy. <laughs> and they are dolls. What is the dark web version of Etsy called? Uh, you don't want to know. <laughs> we can't tell you. We, we did a rescue. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it's basically what she's selling are collectible antique dolls that were taken from crime scenes and like famous crime scenes. Wait, she's selling dolls that were taken from crime scenes? Yeah. So How does she get her hands on them? Well, so there's there's kind of two levels to this. Either she's watching unsolved mysteries and making them up. <laughs> <gasps> she's scamming people. Yeah. That's like the best case scenario, right? Yeah, that's the best so case. So best scenario. case scenario, she is, you know, watching back episodes of Unsolved Mysteries and being like, oh, look, it's a Betsy Wetsy from that murder. And she's selling them to people. <laughs> Betsy Wetsy. <laughs> okay. So that explains a lot because when I was growing up, she had a doll mm-hmm. that she kept in her closet mm-hmm. in her bedroom. And it was like two and a half feet tall. Mm-hmm. And it had this ratty blonde yeah. hair. God, mm-hmm. what was that thing called? Kathy or something. Kathy. I mean, it was creepy. Yeah. So she's selling these dolls to people who would be interested in a doll taken from a famous murder. Um, so. The Betsy Wetsy from that crime. Yeah. <laughs> so here's the other problem. So like that's, that's, so I was looking at the site and like these dolls are real expensive. Yeah. And so first I thought, like, well, they're collectibles, right? Collectibles. Because there are people out there that would like that kind of thing. For sure. For sure. What I think the subtext of this is, is these dolls are somehow cursed. And you can send them to people you don't like. And the dolls will, like, play pranks on them and ruin their lives. Because, like, it's a Like the real thing. Annabelle. Like the real Annabelle. Oh, so. no. Oh, no. So if you get a package, so in the like mail, a voodoo, like a yeah, oh no, yeah, no, it's it's it, either way. And oh, and she gets a commission out of that, right, 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 right. So like, if it, you know, you have an aunt who just want to terrorize with <laughs> with a My Little Pony. <laughs> that friendship com- is magic. Friendship is magic, doll. That was in a, <laughs> you know, in a in a murder. Um, you can and you give your that aunt a haunted My Little Pony. <laughs> so, and shenanigans, <laughs> shenanigans with you. So, um. God, what, it, what, where does she find time to like? She's retired now. Oh, that's true. So, um, so yeah, so anyway, th- here's the deal. So at worst case scenario, she's selling not scams. Off, scams, right, it's a big scam. And like, that's okay. I mean, it's a little dark, but it's okay. But like, if, for the love of God, if you get a package from BA's Annabelle's, don't open it. No. Throw it away. Maybe, maybe call a priest. Maybe put in the phone. Maybe call the bomb squad. Maybe burn it. Maybe burn it. I mean, we all know how haunted dolls are really hard to kill. <laughs> That's true. If you've seen any of the Annabelle so, movies. So just don't bring it in the house. Yeah. Yeah. You're probably, what you should do 
is. And it's like it's like did you there used to be a website called Red Envelope, uh-huh. and you would always get. It was based on, um, I think it was like in Chinese, in Mm -hmm. China, where it's like good luck to, the color red is good luck with gifts and stuff like that. And so the envelope, there was always a red envelope that came in the package. It's like, she goes all out and makes it look cutesy. Oh yeah. And I mean, they are, I mean, she, I think she cleans the blood stains off the dolls first. Well, one would hope. One would hope, right. But yeah, I mean, just don't don't open that package, people. Um, well, thank you for bringing this to, to the attention of the world because you can email that where that homicide is spelled where homicide wrong. Homicide is spelled with an S, <laughs> and it references BA's Annabelle's. Don't click on the link. I mean, I'm I'm probably going to therapy about what I saw on that site. Ugh. It's it's dark, and it's a little scary. But that being said, we love Betty Ann. We do love Betty Ann. Yeah. All right, so thank you, John, for helping us through that trauma. Yeah, for sure. Um, so now we're going to talk about Angela Lansbury. So this month, this week, this week we watched the Reluctant Debutante from 1958. So we're going to do, we're going to try to have some structure around this. We keep <laughs> trying to do that, and then it goes, that Go goes it, off the wheels. So we're going to do, we're going to each talk about what we rate it. Okay. And then whether or not, you know, we liked it and what we particularly liked about it. Mm -hmm. Before that, we'll talk about the fact, like the facts about the movie. Sure. So it was made in 1958. Mm -hmm. Um, Angela Lansbury was 33 years old. Mm -hmm. Her daughter, so she was playing, so we always talk about whether or not it's age Mm -hmm. age appropriate casting. So she was 19 years older than her daughter, who, the actress that played her daughter, sorry, who... The, no, that's not right. Yeah, it is because she was 14. That actress is 14. She lied about her age. Wow. So I was I found this online that um, John Dixon, the guy who played David John, the drummer. John Saxon. John Saxon, mm-hmm. not Dixon. John Saxon. His character was David Dixon? I, no. They're both named David. Anyway. anyway. John Saxon found out because he there's this trivia thing on mm-hmm. IMDb that it says that he thought there was something off mm-hmm. about Sandra D in this movie. She was, fo- excuse me, she was 14. She lied about her age. Her, Sandra D. Yeah. Was 14. Wait, but that's not that's not Angela Lansbury's daughter. I'm sorry, I'm getting it all confused. Sandra D was 14 when the movie was made. Okay. She lied about her, her mother lied had her lied about her age so she could be in more interesting roles. Mm-hmm. I messed all that up. Doesn't matter. Anyway, I mean, Angela Lansbury was 33. Her daughter, the character, was 17. Right. So she was 16 years older than the character. Right. Angela Lansbury was thir- 16 years old chronologically right. to the character she was supposed to be the mother of. Right. When in reality, she was 33 when actually she was paying, playing, playing someone, someone like in her mid- early 40s. Yeah, mid, mid 40s or whatever. Yeah. So, um, Not terrible. No. No. Not and for Angela Lansbury. No. And but there she was, wasn't older than her daughter. Right. And more than a year older than her daughter. Yeah. Um, so there was no cat. There was no cat. And there was no knitting. There was no knitting. Um, she does wear a hideous dress. <laughs> I don't know why you hate this dress so Oh, my much. God. There's like a ball scene. And like, so Angela Lansbury's character is sort of like the gossipy comic relief rival. So, but there's this one scene she's wearing this dress and it's just like. Do you, do you just not like navy blue dresses or? <laughs> navy blue dresses with a sweetheart weird neck oh, that yeah. made her like it was just it was she wasn't supposed to look good in it right that right, was the right. point of the costume and I'm like they did a really good job with all the jewels and yeah. the current and the tiara yeah. okay so let's do the thing where you you talk about how you would rate it and all that um so what are, are we we're not done with facts well, no, those are, that's our list of facts that we do. Okay. The year it was made, how old she was, how old she was playing. Were any cats hurt? Cat, any cats hurt, and was there any mm-hmm. fiber craft? Right. <laughs> none, none. <laughs> um, yeah. I, so it was a fun movie. I, um, it was a very charming movie. Yeah. So Rex Harrison is in it. He plays Sandra Dee's British father, um, and he's got a he's his actual wife at the time plays 
is her stepmother. So those two have really great comic timing, interactions, so it was really worth watching for that. So the plot's kind of wafer thin. Sandra Dee is an American who comes over for the British debutante season and doesn't like British boys and falls in love with an American drummer who's also an Italian count. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I mean, it's just a, and it's, it's a, it's based on a play and there are several sequences that are very play-like, people popping in and out of doors and stuff like that, but it's very, very cute, very funny. Um, Rex Harrison's very good. Angela Lenz is very good. The woman who plays the stepmother is really good too. Um, so yeah, I would say it was well worth the $1.99 rental fee. Cool. So I really, really liked it. Um... I I was kind of um, I didn't I, again. This is another movie that I had no idea what it was about. Mm -hmm. I did. I do now finally understand the line in Greece where she says, "Look at me, I'm Sandra D." Where they're making fun right. of Sandy, right? Because I didn't really know who Sandra D was. I knew she was an actress, but like I didn't understand the whole thing. Right. So now I understand that better. Um, but. Yeah, it was it was a great. I I, I mean, it was, I wouldn't say it was great. I, I really, really, really enjoyed it. Yeah, it was definitely a good way to spend an hour and a half this morning. Yeah, because it was only an hour and a half long. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I liked it too. Yeah, I mean, there was it was nineteen fifty eight, so there were a few like slightly icky things around like. Oh yeah, like there was the, like this one character who was basically. What sexually I would, harassing sexually harassing borderline sexually assaulting characters oh, so I'd say sexually assaulting yes and it was like I mean it was it wasn't said like he he wasn't like the lead so it wasn't like she you know he wasn't like the main guy but what he was doing was pretty awful yeah and people were like and he was supposed to be an icky character for, right but there was just like sort of like there was never any consequences consequences well and the fact that the parents were kind of like they liked him because of who he was right in the social yeah you know and the money the yeah. money he had and all that and just like pretend that he's not trying to yeah so that was just a little yeah. weird and again force for himself 1958 you know you're kind of like mm. but um but yeah i all right so i'm going to talk a little bit about the um trivia that i found online okay so i just steal this from other websites let me see if i can get this to open the first thing was that um, that I thought was funny was this movie was shot in Paris because Rex Harrison was having tax problems and could not go to the U.S. or the U.K. That's awesome. <laughs> I was wondering because I read it, it was shot in Paris, and I was like, well, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah. We, one thing we didn't mention was it was um, directed by Vicente... Vincent Minnelli. Or, oh, so I has to say Vincent? I've always heard it Vincent oh, Minnelli. Okay. Um, who is Liza Minnelli's dad. Judy Garland's husband. Yeah. Um, so the other thing is, you talked a little bit about this, but Kay Kendall, mm -hmm. who was the woman who played the stepmom, she, say what, tell me what you said, wh so, what you found online. So she and Rex Harrison were actually married in real life. So that explains they had really great chemistry. I think they might've been in the play together before this happened. Mm. Um, and so she was like 32. So she, again, is also... I mean, she's like a younger stepmom, but she definitely is playing She was than, 32 because she was a year younger than uh, Angela yeah. Lyons. so she's playing a little older than herself. So she and Rex Harrison were married. She died the next year um, after filming this movie. She had leukemia while she was filming it. And what's crazy is Rex Harrison knew she had leukemia and didn't tell her. So she was ill the whole time and just didn't know yeah it said in the thing that she had a, she thought she had an iron deficiency right so that's really sad and also yeah. really kind of like i i mean scott if i ever have i'll tell you thank you i'll tell you i would like to know um so yeah but i mean she was really really good and it made me really sad because like i would have like i don't know if she did other movies and stuff like that but i'd like to see her in other stuff she was in one other movie after mm -hmm this movie okay she made one more movie after that and i can't remember what the name of it was i think she's a stage actress too mm. she had the most amazing nose yeah she was just really good her nose was like yeah like what everybody wants their nose to be right. it's the one you pick out of the catalog right um so the other thing was she the, the movie that she finished was once more with feeling 
that's a Buffy episode. <laughs> yeah, so... That's the famous Buffy musical episode. Oh, is it? Yes. Oh. Um, so it actually lost money. Okay. Um, at the box office. Um, and it didn't have great reviews and stuff, but I thought it was a, a very fun movie. Yeah, so for sure. Um, again, another movie that I would have never watched. Oh, no. But I'm glad we did. Yeah, for sure. And Angela Lansbury was very good in it. There were, there were scenes with... So I think it's like a lot of these movies... The, oh, and John Saxton just died like a week ago. Yeah. So the, who was the guy who played the love interest for, the, for Sandra D. Yeah. So like a lot of these movies, like there were... Like the, the Rex Harrison, Kay Kendall were like the people you Sandra D was fine John Saxon was fine but those two were the reason to watch it they were really good together and there were a couple of scenes with the two of them and Angela Lansbury just playing off each other that were just delightful oh yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah I would say why not yeah definitely I think in the in the top side on the top half of the movies you watched so far oh yeah Bye. so why don't you tee up what our next one's gonna be so this was we are going to go so we're going to go out of the land of buy this on an obscure streaming site and we're <laughs> going to watch mary poppins returns yeah, so, which neither of us have seen which neither of us have seen um and, and we're, we're a little excited to see it because we just watched hamilton on disney <laughs> and lynn manuel miranda is burnt oh that's right i forgot about that. yes and emily Blunt's i'm obsessed i mean yeah like mary poppins is one of my favorite movies so yeah. But it, I've heard it's good. Yeah, I will. And Emma Watts, I mean, um, who's the woman? Emily Blunt. That, Emily Blunt plays Mary, so Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins. So and, and then, that she's and then wonderful. So Ben Wish, Winshaw mm -hmm. is grown up James. Oh, I love him. I know. So, oh yeah, it'll so it'll be good. Yeah. Yeah. And Angel Lansbury's the balloon woman. Right. I, she is. I think she's probably in the movie for all of five minutes. Yeah. But that's okay. That's it counts. Okay. So um, it won't, wouldn't be the smallest cameo we've done. No. So um, just to wrap up here, I'm gonna. There's a few comments I wanted to respond to sure. um, from our last episode. So, um, so there were a couple people who um, the all squared up 2.0 hat was the fail pattern <laughs> for that I did not finish for our knit along, and so Kate Sidhe and Valerie Fisher both. Um, had the idea of why would why don't you just finish binding off and mm. use it as a cowl? Yeah, that'd be cool. And I liked that idea. It's a very good idea. But I think, you know, we were talking a little bit about this, and and other people talked about it in the comments. It's like once you kind of are done with a project and have decided to frog it, it, it would be really hard for me to go back. And I'm going to reuse that yarn. I want to mm -hmm. reuse that yarn for something that I'm really going to enjoy. Right. And I don't think that I would necessarily It's like a relationship. It. Once you're done, you're done. <laughs> yeah. And I think the other thing is that the hole, I don't think the hole would really be big enough because mm -hmm. um, it's not the full, Right. I don't know. It just, I don't think it would work. It might, but I, I think I'm just going to reuse the yarn. Sure. Um, the other thing was... Um, in response to um, the Please Murder Me movie, mm -hmm. the last Angela Lansbury movie we made or watched, um, there was the question that I had about all the Buddhas and mm -hmm. stuff everywhere. And so Lynn Steele had commented that um, the 50s house decor was very into Asian and world items. My parents had all these Asian and Pacific Island type decor back in the 50s. It was the style, so I would say it was... Um, trendy and movies back then wow. as well and then Robert Wright had said that there was a renewed interest after the 1840s transcendentalist movement in Buddhism post-world war II I wonder oh no sorry and post-world war II and yeah and in Buddhism post-world war II and Korean War in the US as soldiers returned home cool so thank you for that info that's exactly why, why I asked this? that question yeah and then I also like I mentioned this already but I wanted to thank um, people for their support there were a lot of comments about like don't be so hard on yourself <laughs> for frogging your project right. um, and then um, Kath, Kath, sorry, Kathy Moses commented that she had purchased a tutorial thing um, put out by Le Petit Saint Crochet and it's a download called Honey, Get Control of Your Whips. Uh -huh. um, oh, actually, I think it's a document. I thought uh -huh. I was thinking it was a video, but I think it's a document. And it says, um, if you walk through it 
and it um, kind of helps you organize your whips. Oh. You're only allowed to have 10 at a time. Uh-oh. She said that she said she has 26. <laughs> okay. And it talks about how to evaluate whether to keep her frog something. Um, and she said it's really it's really great. Nice. So that's thank it's you like for a, that. It's like a twelve step program for whips. Yeah, exactly. And then um, Linda Daly, several people commented about the lemonade mm -hmm. that we were drinking last time, and so it's it we literally just made lemonade from powdered lemonade mix, and then I took basil out of the garden and Bubbled cleaned the bit. leaves, yeah. and then like pinched them or whatever mm -hmm. like bruised yeah. them and put them in the lemonade and that it lends the flavor to that i mean i think the longer that the leaves steep in mm -hmm. the lemonade the more flavorful yeah. it'll be i think something that i've seen people talk about is if you're going to make if you're going to really do it right mm -hmm. you make a simple syrup gotcha and you put the basil in the simple syrup oh. and the heat and everything mm -hmm. really draws out the flavors oh. and then you use fresh lemons and you make the lemonade that way which i i'm definitely going to do that now yeah for sure that sounds really good <laughs> and because the reason i thought about that is because there's a we have a lot of mint mm -hmm. and um the mint chocolate chip ice cream recipe because mm -hmm. i'm going to make some mm -hmm. ice cream with it is they talk about making the base mm -hmm. and then you steep the leaves in the base. Okay. So. Cool. Um, and then Linda Daly also said um, that she was talking about the frogging projects mm -hmm. and she said when she gets down, bogged down with a project, she makes herself get determined and keep going until it's done. Mm -hmm. And then she made, this is the point that I was interested in. She said, I may, it might be hard at the time, but when I get it finished, it feels so good. And I usually learn something that I wouldn't have if I quit. Right. Which is a really good point. Still not going to finish my hat. <laughs> but I think that's a good... A lot of people are like, oh yeah, if you don't like it, just quit. And just do something else. But I think that's a good point for the other side of the discussion. Which right. is, if you keep going, you'll have that sense of accomplishment of doing something. Having done something hard. But mm -hmm. also you will learn something that you might not have. Sometimes, I mean, my problem is with most of my whips, it's not that I... Usually it's ones that I'm bored of. Yeah. So, yeah, that's true. It's it's yeah. It's you get bored with it, or you're you're more excited about something yeah, else. Yeah, that's usually the big thing. Yeah. So anyhow. Yeah. So so anyway, All thanks right. everybody. We had a, a good time. Um, in a new location. In a new location and, 40 and feet away interacting with all of you guys and yeah. So we'll be back next week and so we'll have watched. Um, Mary Poppins Mary returns. Poppins returns and And hopefully we will not get a BA doll on our doorstep. A BA BA's Annabelle's. Yeah, BA we Annabelle. we so next week we're still gonna be here. We're in a couple weeks we're yeah. going to a cabin and it'd be fun to try to record there. For sure. But anyway. Alright, well thanks right. everybody. Bye. Bye.